Hello everyone, we will be discussing summation formulas or properties of sigma notation. Ang unang formula na pag-uusapan natin when it comes to summation is the sum of a constant c mula sa lower limit na 1 hanggang kay n is just equal to the products ng constant na kinukuha natin times our upper limit n. Para sa discussion na to, gagamitin natin yung formula, then i-co-confirm natin yung sagot by getting the sum ng terms ng sequence natin. Let us try it out dito sa example natin, the sum of 3 from n is equal to 1 hanggang 4. According sa formula natin, kukunin lang natin yung constant natin na c, in this case yung 3, and then i-multiply natin siya sa upper limit, in this case yung 4. So this is just equal to 3 times 4, and that is just equal to 12. Ganito lang siya i-solve using our formula, pero kung gagamitin natin yung konsepto ng summation na kukunin natin yung sum ng lahat ng terms, din ang gagawin lang natin ay isa-substitute natin yung n doon sa terms na kinukuha na natin ng summation. Pero kung titignan natin, constant lang yung 3, wala tayong n na isa-substitute sa kanya. Kaya ang gagawin lang natin, kukunin natin yung constant natin na 3, this is our first term. Then again, dahil walang n, yung second term natin is still our constant 3. Our third term is 3, tapos yung fourth term natin, yung huli, kasi hanggang 4 lang tayo, that is still 3. Then we add 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, this is equal to 12, and pareho lang siya dun sa paggamit natin nung formula. Kaya mas madali kung gagamitin na lang natin yung formula for the summation of a constant. So this is for our first formula, punta na tayo sa ating pangalawang formula when it comes to summation. Kinukuha natin yung sum nung isang constant na nakamultiply sa isang sequence. We have a sub i mula kay 1 hanggang kay n. Kapag ganito yung given na meron tayong products, according to our formula, yung constant natin ay pwede nating ilabas dun sa summation notation. Kaya yung constant natin na c, siya yung minultiply natin sa sum nung a sub i still from 1 until n. Again, magagawa lang natin to kapag meron tayong constant na nakamultiply sa sequence, pwede natin siyang ilabas ng ating summation or sigma notation. Now, let us use this on our example. Kailangan natin kunin yung sum ng 3n for our n is between 1 and 4. Since meron tayong constant na 3 na nakamultiply kay n, according to our formula, pwede natin siyang ilabas ng summation notation. Kaya this is also equal to 3 times the sum of, ang naiwan na lang sa loob ay si n, for our n is between 1 to 4. Then kunin na lang natin itong summation na to. So this is equal to yung 3, nasa labas na siya, imumultiply natin siya, starting dun sa lower limit natin na 1, siya yung ipapalit natin kay n, hanggang sa makarating tayo sa 4. So we start with 1, and then we get the sum, wala namang ibang kasama yung n, kaya tuloy na tayo sa 2, next is 3, until makarating tayo dun sa last term natin which is 4. Then this is equal to 3 times 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 that is equal to 10. So we have our answer that is 30. This is by using our summation formula. Then let us try to solve it. Tignan natin kung pareho pa rin ang sagot kapag directly kinuha natin yung sum ng terms natin. So we have 3n. Ang gagawin natin from 1, isa-substitute lang natin siya kay n. Kaya yung 3n natin will become 3 times 1, tapos yung susunod na number, we have 3 times 2. Then next, yung 3n natin ay magiging 3 times 3. And then last term, if our n is equal to 4, then this is 3 times 4. Then tuloy natin yung ating computation, we have 3 times 1, this is just equal to 3, plus 3 times 2 is 6, plus 3 times 3 is 9, plus 3 times 4 is 12. Then kapag kinuha natin yung sum nito, we have 3 plus 6 is 9, plus 9 is 18, plus 12, that is just equal to 30. Pareho lang dun sa sagot natin kapag gumamit tayo ng summation formula. But as we can see, mas maikli yung naging solution kapag ginamit lang natin yung formula natin. Now let us proceed dun sa ating pangatlo. We have our two sequence, A sub i and then B sub i. 
tapos pinaghihiwalay sila ng operation na addition or subtraction. According to this formula, pwede natin kuhanin separately yung summation ng a sub i na makikita natin dito, tapos i-carry over natin yung operation na addition or subtraction, then makukuha din natin ng nakahiwalay yung summation ng pangalawang sequence natin na b sub i. Using this formula, pwede natin silang mahiwalay by addition or subtraction. Subukan natin siya dito sa ating example. We are getting the sum of n plus 2 from 1 until 3. Since yung operation between n and 2 is addition, according to our formula, pwede natin silang paghiwalayin. We let our n be a sub i, tapos yung 2 naman natin ang b sub i. So this is just equal to, kunin natin yung summation nung una natin na n, Still, hindi nagbabago from 1 to 3. Tapos nakihiwalay yung summation naman, yung pangalawa natin, which is a constant na 2. And dapat hindi nagbabago from 1 to 3. Then, etong part na to, we can substitute yung lower limit na 1 dito kay n hanggang makarating tayo kay 3. So, this is just equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3. Ito yung sa una, and then the operation is addition, tapos ito ay summation lang of a constant. According to our first formula, pwede natin ito makuha by multiplying our constant dun sa upper limit natin. So this is just equal to 2 times 3. Then performing the operation, 1 plus 2 plus 3, that is 6, plus 2 times 3, that is also 6. So our answer is equal to 12. Then, i-check ulit natin siya by applying our summation. Kapag kinuha natin yung sum ng terms natin na n plus 2, for our checking on this part, this is equal to ang first term natin. By the way, this should be n. So, ayusin natin siya kasi number of terms na yung involved. So, we just have to substitute our n starting from 1 dito hanggang makarating tayo kay 3. Kaya yung n plus 2 natin, this will become 1 plus 2. Then, our next term, yung pangalawa, our second term will become 2 plus 2. And then for our last term, if n is equal to 3, then n plus 2 is equal to 3 plus 2. Then kapag tinuloy natin yung ating operation, this is just equal to 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 3 plus 2, this is 5. So we have 3 plus 4 is 7, plus 5, we have our 12. Pareho lang yung sagot natin by applying our formula. So going back here, kapag meron tayong dalawang sequence a sub i and b sub i and then kapag pinaghihiwalay sila ng addition or subtraction under a sigma or summation notation, then pwede natin silang paghiwalayin by that same addition or subtraction na operation. So with this, let us proceed with our fourth summation formula. We have here kapag kinukuha natin yung summation of a certain term i, simula kay i is equal to 1 hanggang n, we just use this formula n times n plus 1 over 2. Yung formula na to is applicable kapag single term lang yung nasa loob ng summation notation, kagaya nitong given natin, summation of n for our n is between 1 and 5. Kapag solo lang yung term na n sa sigma notation, then kukunin lang natin yung upper limit natin, in this case yung 5, then isasubstitute natin siya dito sa formula. Kaya having our n na 5, this is equal to yung nasa numerator na n times n plus 1 will become 5 times 5 plus 1 and then this is over 2. Then performing the operation, we have 5 tapos ang 5 plus 1, that is just equal to 6 over 2. Then 5 times 6, this is equal to 30 over 2 that is just equal to 15. Then let us confirm kung tama to by applying Our summation, kukunin lang natin from our lower limit na 1, isasubstitute natin siya kay n hanggang makarating tayo kay 5. So we have here, this is equal to starting from 1, the next term is 2, then we add 3 plus 4 hanggang upper limit natin na 5. Then this is just equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, that is also equal to 15. So baka nagtataka kayo kung bakit pa kailangan gamitin yung formula kung madali lang naman kunin yung sum using this method. Pero kasi yung upper limit natin is just 5. Kapag medyo malaki na to around 10, 15, 20, or 30, or 
yung pagkuha natin ng sum ng terms na nandito will be much longer. Kaya doon na mas magagamit etong summation formula natin. So, kailangan lang natin siyang alalahanin. For this one, simple lang naman yung nasa loob natin, single term lang na i. Pero for our next formula, we have here, yung nasa loob naman natin ay merong exponent na 2. If we are getting the sum of i squared from i is equal to 1 hanggang n, then again, kukunin natin yung upper limit natin na n, then isasubstitute natin siya dito sa ating formula na n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. Pwede natin gamitin yung formula na to kapag yung n natin is raised to a specific exponent which is 2 kagaya nung nakikita natin sa example at formula natin. So since pareho na yung format nila, then ang titignan na lang natin ay yung upper limit natin na n. For our example, ang given natin ay 4, kaya yun ang ipapalit natin sa values ng n natin dito sa formula. Kaya to get the sum of n squared, for our n is between 1 and 4, this is just equal to Yung nasa numerator natin na n, ang gagamitin natin ay yung upper limit na 4. So we substitute, we have our 4 times n plus 1 will become 4 plus 1. Tapos yung nasa loob natin na 2n plus 1 will become 2 times 4 plus 1. And then yung denominator natin, this is still 6. Then tuloy natin yung ating operation sa numerator, this is just equal to 4. Then 4 plus 1, that is just 5. And then yung nasa loob, 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1. This is just equal to 9. Then this is still over 6. Then tuloy natin, this is equal to 4 times 5 times 9. This is equal to 180. Then divided by 6, this is just equal to 30, which is the sum of our terms. Ngayon, nakuha na natin yung sagot natin dito. Confirm ulit natin yung formula natin by getting the sum ng terms natin from 1 Ipapalit muna natin yung 1 dito sa n natin. Kaya yung n squared natin, this will become 1 squared plus second term is 2 raised to 2 plus third term is 3 raised to 2 until yung upper limit natin na 4 raised to 2. Then kapag sinimplify natin, 1 squared is 1 plus 2 squared is 4 plus 3 squared is 9 plus 4 squared is 16. Then kapag inad natin, 1 plus 4 is 5 plus 9 is 14, plus 16, then we arrive at the same answer kapag ginamit natin yung formula which is also 30. Again, mas mukha lang simpleng gawin to kasi mas kaunti lang yung number of terms, pero kapag mas marami na yung number of terms natin na n, then it is much better to use and remember our formula. So yung pang-apat natin is i, yung pang-lima natin is i squared. Para naman sa ating huling summation formula, then we have our i raised to 3. Then ang gagamitin lang natin na formula is n squared times n plus 1 raised to 2 over 4. Where again, yung n natin is our upper limit in this case, dun sa example natin ay 3. Kaya para magamit natin yung formula natin, ipapalit lang natin yung 3 dun sa n nung ating formula na nandito. Kaya this is equal to numerator n squared, ang n natin ay 3. So this will become 3 raised to 2 times yung n plus 1 ay magiging 3 plus 1, raised to 2, and then this is over 4. Then kapag sinimplify natin, 3 squared is 9 times, yung nasa loob natin na 3 plus 1, this is 4, raised to 2, that is just equal to 16, over 4. Then para mas madali yung computation natin, let us perform our division, 16 divided by 4, this is just equal to 4, tapos yung natira, 9 times 4, that is equal to 36. Then again, let us confirm and check our answer. Kapag kinuha natin yung sum ng terms natin, this is equal to starting from 1 until 3, sila yung ipapalit natin kay n, kaya yung n cube will become 1 raised to 3, next term is 2, then raised to 3 also, tapos yung last term natin is 3, then raised to 3. So this is equal to 1 cube is 1, plus 2 cube, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2, that is 8, plus 3 cube is 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 that is 27. Then 1 plus 8 is 9 plus 27 this is also equal to 36. Then we were able to confirm our summation formula. At eto na yung anim na formula or properties of summation or sigma notation. Magagamit natin sila para mas maging simple 
yung pagkocompute natin ng solution or evaluation ng summation or sigma notation. Hello everyone, I am Sir Kenneth of STEM Teacher PH. Kung nakatulong sa iyo itong video na to, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell para updated kayo sa ating uploads. Bye!